Hey guys, Suburban Home Not here, and today we are going to be unboxing and unwrapping this right here. It's a Ryobi. And we're going to check that out. It's an RM480 EX electric mower. Uh, this is a 38 inch deck. So it just came, and you're probably wondering what is that? What, you got two of them? Actually, yeah, I do, unfortunately. Uh, did have the Cub Cadet. Let's go, come around here and take a look at this. I boxed this up because this did a really good job. It cut the grass, cut the lawn. However, it scalped. It has a 30 inch deck. And what I learned is that most of the 38 inch or the 30 inch decks don't have the anti scalping wheels, which this does. You can see this is a 38 inch deck and that has a scalping wheel. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that later on. I want to go mow, and well, it's scalped. I have St. Augustine grass, and I like to keep it around four, four and a half inches tall. It scalped it down to about an inch and a half, so <laughs> I immediately got rid of the Cub Cadet, and was looking at the Ryobi, 38 inch. It's down here, and down here. You haven't even taken the plastic off. Did you even read the instructions? All right, guys, so what we're going to do first here is remove the plastic, remove the boxes, find the instructions, uh, and then we'll be set. See what joyous things are in here. All right, the charger. Excellent. Yeah. 
That is a heavy duty charger. Next one. Mulch cover. It's like a little solo flex. Those of you who might remember that. Solo flex bands. Extra keys. Alright, wrenches. More stuff. Alright, now the last one. Steering wheel. I fell out of there. There you go. Now he's back home. And some hardware, I believe. Yeah. Got the steering wheel. Three left. And four. All right, so we have the, the four corners right here. All the bolts are off and also the middle support is off. And uh, the next step is just to remove these guys right here. All right, next thing we're gonna do is connect the battery, which goes right there. All right, so the seat is, take these off. So I'm using the 14 mil, the one that they gave us, and this is a, this is actually a 13 mil, the nut. At least that's what I'm finding out. Let's go. There's a little tab right here. Hopefully you can see that. This little clip just clips right in there. Let's re-secure this. It's all snappy, I think. Yep, it's all snappy. All right, next is the steering column. This bolt was in there. Just gonna take that out. Two holes right here, meet the, these two holes right here.
So this one is the same. I'm using the 14 mil and the 13 mil. All right, next is the steering column. There's two holes right here on the bottom, as you can see. And there are two holes right there. They have to line up. So we're just gonna put that right there. Hope for the best. I think that's good. And then the cap goes on. All right, next is the hardware for the steering. So we're gonna do the flange washer with the flange up and then the spring. Then we take the second flange washer and we put it with the flange down. And then the steering wheel hub. And then we're gonna take the steering wheel and put that right on there. I guess making sure it's straight. Make sure it looks straight. Take the washer, push it down a little bit, put that on there, and then take the nut right there and put it right on. Then we'll go ahead and tighten that up. Yeah, it's gonna get it snug. That looks good. I'm gonna put the cover back on. See how that does. That snaps on very easily. All right, we're making progress. Installing the bumper, removing these bolts right here. Yeah, it's got it. Both of these are 14 mils. I don't think it's going anywhere. All right, next is check the tire pressure. Now the rear ones say to be at 28 PSI and uh, we're right at about 22. Alright that looks good about 28 right there on the nose. Let's do the other side. Alright guys so I think that's it. Moment of truth. Now I am going to be using my homemade little ramps here. I used to use, use these for oil changes. Have that lined up right there so it's not such a jarring reverse. All right, so they said to have it up the highest one. So, yep. Yeah. So have it up to about four and a half inches. So put it in on. There you go, lights up. Mower's not engaged. Mower deck's up. Put it in reverse. And let's see what happens. Boy, that's more annoying than the car. All right, so the last thing that we're going to do is to check the uh, safety shut off. So we're going to turn this on and then engage the blade. And then I'm going to stand up and it should turn off within five seconds. Seems to work pretty good. Push that down, turn it off. Now it's time to charge it up. All right, so we have the charger hooked up. Here's the port. Looks pretty cool. Lift this up. Looks to be like a triangle, so we're just gonna put it in there. Use some little common sense. All right, so that green light is blinking. So they say to let this charge up overnight. Um, I'm guessing that's probably, you know, anywhere from six to eight hours. The battery indicator showed a life of about 47%, so I'm just, just gonna let this charge up for about eight hours and then we'll take it out for a spin.